They call it the Asus ZenBook Pro 15 Flip OLED. Now this is the first laptop I've been able to review with the Intel Arc GPU. This has the A370M. And I'm excited about this because this is giving me some perspective on if we should choose an Intel GPU, a Radeon, or an Nvidia. And I must say, from a power management standpoint, Intel has definitely got something great here. For the longest time, I've been waiting for Intel to optimize their power efficiency of their i7-12700H processors, but I'd yet to see anything I was really impressed by. With this laptop, we're seeing great power efficiency between the GPU and the CPU with 10 hours of battery life from the Passmark Productivity Benchmark as well as streaming video playback. In the past, we've only seen laptops with i7-12700Hs be able to get around eight hours of battery life tops. That example comes from the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro, which actually has a great battery life with an iGPU mode. Keep in mind, there's no iGPU mode on this laptop. So you're actually getting 10 hours of battery life with the GPU and the CPU running together on whisper mode inside of the Asus command center here. So right off the bat, I'm seeing great power efficiency, which makes me very happy. And we'll get into the benchmarks later in the video so you can see if it has the performance that you specifically need matched with power efficiency. Now this is also an OLED screen. So not only are we getting great power efficiency with the CPU and the GPU, but this is a bright color accurate and high color gamut range screen. So it's really nice to see all the components working together with that screen. Sometimes if you have a higher screen brightness, I run all of my tests at about 25%. I don't really run them at an exact nits. So if it's a brighter screen, it's gonna consume a little bit more power. And even with that screen consuming more power, we're still seeing great battery life. This laptop is thin, light, and on the go friendly with that efficient battery life. And this has become my new daily driver. I love that I have an HDMI port to connect into my live streams when I'm doing streams. I have two USB type C's on the right side panel as well as a headphone jack. And you have two nice large vents to keep this laptop cool since it is running a four gig equipped VRAM card. Now we do have a micro SD card slot. I'm not exactly stoked on the micro SD card slot. I wish it was a full size. That would be one area where I wish they would improve that for me personally. I know a lot of you use GoPros and a lot of you use drones and that micro SD card works for you. But for me personally, when I'm doing photography and doing stuff on the go, I like to have a full size SD card. We have a USB type A on this side, giving us a total of two USB type C's, a USB type A, HDMI, and a micro SD card reader. Let's go ahead and open and close the laptop with one hand, see how that does, no problems there. You can see it lifting off the desk a little bit with that ergo lift to give you a little ventilation. Uh, this is also a two in one laptop. So go ahead, flip it over. You can use it as a tablet, put it in presentation mode. Very flexible, a lot of features, very on the go friendly. And of course it is touchscreen and pen capable. So you can get like the Asus 2.0 pen. Uh, I'll link that in the description below if you wanna check that out and that will work with this laptop. Now to cover a few things we didn't get to during the unboxing, here's a quick sample of the speakers in use so you can hear what they sound like. And though we did cover it in the unboxing, here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook with the ARC 370M GPU. Now the keyboard is laid out very nicely. It has a numpad on the right side. The trackpad is pushed a little to the left, so it's centered on the keyboard. And there's a nice spacing around the keys. It's very comfortable to use. I have a full size shift key, which I'm very happy about, and the arrow keys right here. So you're not sacrificing bigger arrow keys for a smaller shift key, which I totally dislike. I love the full size shift key with the smaller arrow keys. Now the trackpad is a good size on this laptop. It's not huge. It's got some nice spacing around it. Um, it could be bigger, but really it doesn't have to be in my opinion. It's big enough for your creator use on the go. It has a nice confident click, a little on the loud side, but it makes me know that I've got a good click on it. It's not too dampened where you're like, not really sure if you click it. Um, so I really like the trackpad on this laptop. And I'm gonna give you a quick audio sample of the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what they sound like. So we've set a goal to reach 100,000 subscribers. And when we reach 100,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away three Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. So you definitely wanna subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss out on the announcement video of how you can win one of these Lenovo Legion 5 Pros once we pass 100,000 subscribers. Now, as we're going through the video, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Asus ZenBook Pro 15 Flip OLED, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. 
Now the thermal management and fan noise on this laptop were really, really good. I liked how they took an i7-12700H and this new four gig equipped Intel Arc GPU and they give us great thermals and great fan noise. So the highest amount of fan noise we saw was 48 decibels and that was for on performance mode for the 4K export. And then we saw an average of about 35 to 40 on standard mode at about 72 degrees Celsius. And then we saw zero decibels of fan noise on whisper mode, which honestly is not always very common for these quiet modes on laptops. A lot of times you flip it to quiet mode, but if you push the laptop hard, they kind of ignore it and you know give you fan noise. But on this laptop, we saw no fan noise and we still saw good performance out of the laptop. So I was really happy to see good thermal management and fan noise from the ZenBook. All right, now I just realized that I actually haven't done an unboxing of this laptop. Um, I'd reviewed a Zen book earlier this year and I thought, ah, I don't really wanna unbox it, I just wanna get right into the review. So before we head on into the performance benchmarks, I need to flip this laptop over and check out the upgrade path. So let's jump in and do that. All right, so I'm not a huge fan when companies do this, but as you can see, they hid two of the screws under the feet. So you had to take the feet off and then the bottom cover pops off. I don't like that, it makes the upgrade a little bit more difficult, but nonetheless, Here's the interior of the laptop. We have the 96 watt hour battery. We have one upgradable SSD. So there's not two SSDs in this laptop, uh, two SSD slots. You can either just, you know, can you leave that one in there and go ahead and upgrade that one, but there's not a secondary SSD slot for you available. So the upgrade path is pretty slim. I don't even see an easily accessible Wi-Fi card. Um, so literally battery and SSD is gonna be your, your really only upgrade path. The fans are placed very nicely. You can see that they pull air in from the side vents and then push that air through the cooling pipes right onto the CPU and GPU here. And so I love how the fans are actually placed where the vents are. A lot of times vents are just like, here and the fans here and hopefully it drags air in they're placed right at the outside so I, that's why we're seeing great thermal temperatures and great fan noise because they don't have to run so hard to get the air into the system so great work on that asus now without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the performance benchmarks of this video and see how this thing performs see if it's right for you all right so now that we have the bottom cover on let's jump into the performance benchmarks and see what this laptop is capable of now first and foremost looking at geekbench single core and multi-core you see it actually hits near the mid range to top of the charts. And this is an i7-12700H and of course the four gig VRAM card in the Arc A370M GPU. So for Geekbench single core, this thing's showing very good results. Now as we get into multi-core, it is actually on the top of the charts of the laptops I have here above the i9-12900H and RTX 3070 Ti inside of the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus M16. So this thing is well optimized, showing great results in Geekbench single core and multi-core. Now as we move into Cinema Bench R23, it holds about the same position as Geekbench single core. And as we go into R23 multi-core, you can see it drops down the list quite a bit. Now multi-core in Cinebench R23, to me more shows you how it might perform on intensive workflows that have a lot of graphical processing. And I think as we shift into the real world benchmarks, we're gonna prove ourselves right that this laptop is not as powerful as Geekbench might have told us it is. So jumping into the Photoshop benchmark, you can see we score a 968, which is a fantastic score. I mean, if this is a thin, light, great battery life laptop and we're scoring a 968, anything above the seven or 800s for Photoshop is fantastic. But as you can see, that same M16 that this laptop beat out in Geekbench is being beat out by almost a hundred points. Um, so. Real world benchmarks show a tiny bit different story, but not a big difference. All right, going into After Effects, you can see that we score a 702. Good score, not a great score. I wouldn't say this is your best bang for buck After Effects laptop, but you'll be able to perform well in After Effects. Now, moving on to Premiere Pro Playback. Now, this is an area where I was actually quite surprised. I did not think we would see as low a drop frames in 6K B-RAW as we are seeing here. We're seeing 535 drop frames frames for 6K B-RAW. That's better than other laptops with the RTX 3050 Ti, which is a comparable GPU to this GPU. That one's from NVIDIA. This is the Intel GPU, and we're seeing a very low drop frames for 6K B-RAW. 4K, no drop frames, 1080p, of course, no drop frames. So really excited for the performance of this laptop. Now, moving into the export times, 
we had really good export times. Not great. One of the better export times for the 4K export is the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro with the i7 12700H and RTX 3060. That's a six gig VRAM equipped card with a two minute and 30 second export time. This is a three minute and 29 second export. So nearly a minute faster by choosing a high performance gaming laptop than choosing this thin and light on the go friendly laptop with the latest Intel Arc GPU. Now moving on to DaVinci Resolve, you can see that we have a 10 minute and 59 second export, not exactly equipped for DaVinci Resolve. I'm sure the team over at Intel is gonna to continue to work on the optimization for DaVinci Resolve, but as you can see, it isn't performing very well. It's two whole minutes slower than the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 with the RTX 3050 Ti. So that's a substantial amount of time difference. Now I didn't show you 6K export times because honestly it was about a 30 plus minute export. So though you can play back 6K footage in Premiere Pro with very little drop frames, the actual export time was substantial. So I would not recommend this laptop for extensive 6K video editing. This to me is a 1080p and 4K video editing laptop. Punch for punch, should you buy this laptop? And for me personally, I would definitely recommend it. I mean, it's my new daily driver. It's a laptop I'm using on a daily basis for my business work, editing photos. And if you're a graphic designer, digital artist, or photographer, I think this would be a great fit. Even for some 4K video editing, absolutely. Now, if you're gonna be getting into 6K, I would not recommend it. And if you're considering 3D modeling, this would not be the laptop that I would personally choose. I just didn't see the 3D modeling performance I want in order to say, yes, this is a great 3D modeling laptop. Now, perhaps when Intel rolls out higher VRAM equipped cards, like six gigs, eight gigs, 10 gigs, etc., we could see Intel Arc GPUs start to prove themselves as great for 3D modeling, but this four gig VRAM card just isn't quite enough. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and of course, subscribe so we can get to 100,000 subscribers and kick off the giveaway. I'll see you here in the next video.